The Biden administration moved quickly to stem the fallout from the sudden collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, which has put a spotlight on efforts by the Trump administration to weaken financial rules that could have prevented the crisis. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. As you may have heard by now, financial markets in the banking system were roiled on Friday after the sudden disintegration of Silicon Valley Bank, which largely served venture capitalists and tech startups. To many analysts and finance gurus, the collapse almost seemed to come out of nowhere, and it happened very fast. Silicon Valley Bank collapsed today after failing to raise enough money to end its capital crisis. California regulators shut down the bank and put it in control of the FDIC. Silicon Valley Bank becoming the second largest bank failure in U.S. history. SVB, the 16th largest bank in the U.S. with $175 billion in deposits, is now the biggest American bank to fail since the 2008 financial crisis. Its customers are primarily businesses and investors in the tech sector. The swift collapse of Silicon Valley Bank is the second largest financial failure in U.S. history, and it took only 48 hours to unfold. Man, you got to give it to Silicon Valley. They know how to move fast and break things. 48 hours. They basically Amazon Prime to bank collapse. <laughs> and knowing Silicon Valley, I wouldn't be surprised if some tech startup comes along promising even faster bank collapses. It's called Instagon. You just download the app, <laughs> press a button, and watch as all your money is instantly flushed down a digital toilet. Here, I'll show you. <laughs> Honey, did you just lose the kids' college money? Yes. But I got an NFT of a cool plunger and sunglasses, so win-win. <laughs> Look, I don't want to be a doomer, but situations like this are exactly why I keep all the money right here in the desk drawer. What? Where the hell did all my money go? Well, I don't know, Seth. It's no. a mystery. Son of a gun. <laughs> Wally, did you steal all my savings? What? No. I took the under on slaps at the Austrians last night in one big. All right. <laughs> The Treasury Department and Federal Reserve quickly responded to the news by guaranteeing all deposits at SVB, which we'll get to in a minute. But the news also gave us a real contrast in leadership styles from the current president and the guy who preceded him. Joe Biden delivered remarks from the White House in an attempt to calm nervous markets and worried Americans after the collapse of the country's 16th largest bank, although he ended his remarks on an odd note. Today, thanks to the quick action of my administration over the past few days, Americans can have confidence that the banking system is safe. Your deposits will be there when you need them. Small businesses across the country, the deposit accounts at these banks can breathe easier knowing they'll be able to pay their workers and pay their bills. And their hardworking employees can breathe easier as well. All customers who had deposits in these banks can rest assured, I want to rest assured they'll be protected and they'll have access to their money as of today. Every American should feel confident that their deposits will be there if and when they need them. Look, the bottom line is this. Americans can rest assured that our banking system is safe. Your deposits are safe. Thank you, God bless you, and may God protect our troops. See you in California. See you in California? <laughs> if I was Silicon Valley Bank, I would not like hearing that. <laughs> Good news, he bailed us out. Bad news, he's on his way. Biden's like a grandfather telling a principal, you can rest assured that my grandson has pulled his last fire alarm. For one thing, he's not going to be able to lift his arms after he's done cleaning the garage. <laughs> Grandkids sitting there mouthing to the principal, don't let this man take me home with him. <laughs> Biden also made a point of reassuring Americans that taxpayers would not pay for the bailout and that while depositors at SVB would be protected, investors would not. No losses will be borne by the taxpayers. Let me repeat that. No losses will be borne by the taxpayers. Investors in the banks will not be protected. They knowingly took a risk, and when the risk didn't pay off, investors lose their money. All right, seems fair. Investors take risks knowing full well there's a chance they can lose all their money, and that's what happened. Hey, Seth, um, can I borrow a few bucks? No, I'm sorry, I don't have any on me. Damn it, I shouldn't have stolen all your money. So it was you. <laughs> of course it was me. I invested it all in Silicon Valley Bank, and I bet someone would slap Jimmy Kimmel at the Oscars. Damn you, Jimmy, and your unslappable charm. So what, Wally gets two cameras now. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad you're so happy for him. Anyway, so as you heard there, Biden used words like safe, 
confidence and rest assured over and over. And while that's absolutely the right thing for a president to do in this situation, generally speaking, I've never personally felt assured when a president has said the words rest assured. Unless it was Obama. He was the only president who seemed calm while also making you feel like a dork for being worried. No, I know some of you are running around saying, hey, my money's gone. I uh, can't get my money. Well, uh, listen up, you all need to chill the out. He'd be so cool about it, you start thinking, yeah, I don't need money, especially <laughs> since I got Plungy. He's got a pirate hat now. Pirate hat doubles the value. In fact, <laughs> Biden was so concerned with projecting calm that even the way he entered the room for his speech was very low maintenance. There was no pomp, no fanfare. He didn't even have any staff walk in with him. He just ambled in on his own, closed the door, and shuffled over to the podium like he was your next door neighbor popping in for a visit. I love that little shuffle step, like a high school history teacher who's five minutes late for class, like, oh, hey, everybody's here. <laughs> Sorry, gang, big day in the teacher's lounge. Mrs. Balducci's husband left her, and based on how long it took her to tell us the story, I might understand why. <laughs> There's just no staff around him, no presidential fanfare. He looked like he just walked out of the bathroom and now has to improvise a speech. Uh, first things first, uh, don't go in there. Nonetheless, Biden did pretty much exactly what you'd want a president to do in this situation. Take immediate action, reassure Americans everything will be okay. Much like the message former President Donald Trump delivered on his social media website over the weekend, Trump is clearly aware of the fact that sometimes, sometimes, he has the tendency to overreact, which could panic nervous Americans and send shockwaves through the financial markets for no reason. So instead of freaking everyone out, Trump projected calm and confidence when he wrote this very reassuring message in all caps, we will have a Great Depression far bigger and more powerful <laughs> than that of 1929, as proof the banks are already starting to collapse. I mean, credit to him for not ending it with everybody run for your lives. <laughs> Trump isn't just the guy who shouts fire in a crowded theater, he's the guy who lights the match, pours the gasoline and screams, there's a fire and there's no point in leaving because I, I chained the exits. <laughs> fire, we hate fire, don't we folks? Very nasty, not nice. Not nice, the fire. I remember one time I was in the Oval Office, had a guy come up to me, big guy, strong guy, bolts in his neck. <laughs> Tears pouring down his green, monstrous face, and he said to me, he said, Mr. Trump, fire bad. <laughs> and I said, it's so true, Frankenstein. This is a monster. Now look. Very important. Isn't it? A lot of people at home right now going, oh, finally. <laughs> now look, there's a lot to say about what happened to Silicon Valley Bank. There's the fact that its leaders and lobbyists pushed for more lenient financial rules. There's the news that the CEO sold over $3 million in stock just days before the banks collapsed. And then, of course, there's the infuriating hypocrisy of all these libertarian venture capitalist tech bros who routinely rail against government overreach and preach about the virtues of decentralizing finance. It turns out, the people who constantly brag to the rest of us that they're ushering in a new era of techno-utopia without the help of the government couldn't even manage their own assets and basically tank their own bank by losing their and pulling all their money out. Bloomberg reported that billionaire and venture capitalist Peter Thiel uh, had his companies pull their funds from SVB this week. Uh, do we know what kind of role that played in all this? Well, Peter Thiel is an incredibly influential figure in Silicon Valley. And right now, there's a lot of finger pointing going on about what caused this bank run on SVB. Peter Thiel is reported by Bloomberg and his founders fund pulled their money out by Thursday and encouraged his companies to pull their money out as well. Well, word spreads quickly in the Valley, right? You have group chats, you have slacks, people are talking and we saw tens of billions of dollars of money being withdrawn from SVP, which basically was a kiss of death and caused California regulators to shut it down. They basically wrecked an entire bank via group chat. Before now, the craziest thing that ever happened in a group chat was that time Ted Cruz asked his neighbors to go to Cancun and instead they ratted him out to the New York Times. <laughs> this is why I'm fully against Slack. We don't use it here at Late Night. I mean, we Slack just fine without the help from an app. In fact, we don't have any method of centralized communication from our workflow. We just have one giant bullpen, like an old-fashioned newsroom, and when we need a clip or a graphic, someone looks up from their typewriter and screams, give me a clip of Joe Biden walking to the podium with the toilet flushing in the background, stat! <laughs> the 
The big question now, of course, is how did this happen and what could have prevented it? Well, it turns out there's a little known bureaucrat at the center of it whose identity is shrouded in secrecy, and I'm just kidding, it was Donald Trump. In 2010, right after the 08 crash, the Obama administration signed what was known as the Dodd-Frank Act. In 2018, President Trump signed a bill that undid a lot of what Dodd-Frank had been set up to protect banks from collapsing just like this. In 2018, then President Trump um, signed a bill into law which raised the threshold at which banks would need to undergo stress tests. That number, $250 billion, SVB had just under that amount. I mean, of course it was Trump. Trying to figure out what went wrong in this country is turning into a super boring game of Clue where the weapon is always a pen and the killer is always Colonel Ketchup. I wouldn't <laughs> be surprised if we also find out he rolled back federal regulations limiting the amount of cocaine a bear can snort. So. <laughs> Basically, Trump repealed liquidity requirements that would have ensured mid-sized banks like SVB had enough cash on hand to weather a storm like this. And in fairness, you can't blame Trump for not knowing that. We have a team of researchers who can dig through the weeds of legislation to find carefully hidden adjustments to existing safety measures. It's not like Trump loudly bragged about it over and over again. You have regulations that are horrendous. Uh, Dodd-Frank is an example of what we're working on, and we're working on it right now. So we're going to do a very major haircut on Dodd-Frank. We expect to be cutting a lot out of Dodd-Frank because, frankly, I have so many people, friends of mine, that have nice businesses. They can't borrow money. They just can't get any money because the banks uh, just won't let them borrow because of the rules and regulations in Dodd-Frank. We're going to eliminate wasteful regulations, which we've already done probably 25 percent. You can take a look at Dodd-Frank. Uh, for the bankers in the room, they'll be very happy because we're really doing a major streamlining and perhaps elimination and replacing it with something else. He actually said the words, for the bankers in the room, they'll be very happy. A true champion of the forgotten man. <laughs> Who else was in the room with him? Was it an audience of literal fat cats? <laughs> I need a Photoshop of some fluffy big boys, and I need it yesterday. <laughs> How could you possibly? I think rolling back regulations on banks 10 years after a financial meltdown could ever be a good idea. It's like getting up at a podium and saying, we're finally going to ease the regulatory burden on our nation's cannibals by allowing them to take off those muzzles. We love our cannibals. They're job creators, and I'm very confident that they will stick to their promise of only eating salads, and now on a he's got my arm. <laughs> Shoot him! Shoot him! Trump and his cronies gave Wall Street everything they wanted, but they still pretend they're working class populists by complaining about wokeness ruining America. In fact, some Republicans even had the gall to blame this bank collapse on wokeness. Are you seeing other CEOs besides him kind of going, it's time to stop with the climate change and all the woke issues instead of focusing on the main mission of the bank? I mean, you do have these banks focusing on, on ESG and on all of these, these sort of woke policies. Nobody in Washington at this point even acknowledges economics is real unless it could be tied somehow to climate change or racism. Everybody is focused on diversity, and all of the woke issues and not concentrating on the one thing they should, which is shareholder returns. Now coming out that uh, they were one of the most woke banks. I'm sorry, are you out of your mind? You think Silicon Valley Bank was woke? Who do you think was running it? A gender neutral potato head? <laughs> I knew this bank was in trouble the first time I saw the CEO in a bowler hat and lipstick. But it wasn't just Trump who supported rolling back these rules. It's important to note, he also had the support of many Senate Democrats. There were a few at the time who warned that rolling back the rules was a huge mistake, like Senators Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders. Are our memories so short that we have learned nothing from the 2008 Wall Street crash? Now, 10 years later, hoping that we forget all about that, these large financial institutions are back again. How pathetic is that? Just yesterday, the Congressional Budget Office told us that the legislation we are debating today will, and I quote, increase the likelihood that a large financial firm with assets of between $100 billion and $250 billion would fail. Just as a general rule, if Bernie is warning you that you're doing something bad, you should at least give it a second thought. Like, I wish Bernie was there to tell me not to have that third beer when I go out for drinks on a work night. All our memories so short <laughs> that we have learned nothing from karaoke night. 
when you got so drunk you fall asleep on the F train and ended up at Coney Island. <laughs> 99% of the train's gonna last 1% of the stop. There are some obvious lessons here, including the fact that rolling back those regulations in 2018 was a huge mistake and they should be restored immediately. Republicans are blaming wokeness for this bank collapse, when in reality, the blame rests at a bipartisan push to deregulate Wall Street and one former president in particular who clearly needs... A very major haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Caught me off guard. Caught me off guard. This has been a closer look.